All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Blackout. Yes, we are back. The most dangerous show on the net right now. Um, quick disclaimer, this show is for entertainment purposes only. Mm -hmm. um, it is not suitable for children and uh, sensitive men. So this is something we can't lose all the fan base. So. <laughs> so, they say we pandering now. Oh my god! So you know this is something that you know is a a different lane um, mm -hmm. than you know EYL Market Mondays, but it's needed. Um, the uh, views and opinions on this show are just that: views and opinions. So um, by Chat GPT and OpenAI for sure. So take everything mm -hmm. with a grain of salt. But I will say this. We may tell you a joke, but we'll never tell you a lie. If you listen hard enough, you can actually learn something because within the humor and the harsh reality of the dialogue, um, we actually speak a lot of truth. Indeed. That's a fact. These are the conversations you have to have after the success comes too. For so. sure. For sure. This is the conversation Absolutely. that nobody, it's the uncomfortable conversations. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, how you doing, bro? I'm good, man. How you feeling? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. Good to today's episode is sponsored by Calm. <laughs> calm I'm breathing and meditate. Calm.com, man. I, I like yep. those. this man. Those is um uh, who who makes those? Clean waves. Clean Shout waves. Yeah. Is, that's a, a um a boutique it's brand. A brand that, I, th I think they're in LA. Okay. Cut the check. Cut the check, right. please. Cut the check. Affiliate yeah. link play at least. Um, okay. We got a lot to talk about. This week, we're going to do things a little different. We have a guest on, and we're going to bring our guest up early because, you know, we talk about a lot of um, relationship topics and marriage topics specifically. Mm -hmm. and, and we're not married. By the way. Um, but there's been, you know, some critique that you should not listen or take advice mm -hmm. from unmarried people about marriage. I don't believe in that because I feel like anybody can give advice. Um, you can be qualified to give advice, but I digress. They shouldn't take advice from me. My, my shit being shampoo. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be doing my shit backwards. So don't, don't listen to me. So for all you Except on investing in yourself, all you critics out there that have mm -hmm. criticized us for talking about marriage and not being married. We are bringing on our good friend who is yes. married, actually. So let's bring on Kenny Burns. Yes, that's my guy. Kenny Burns is in the building. What's up, brother? How are you, gentlemen? I'm good, I'm man. Great, how man. How are you? I'm blessed. I'm blessed, man. I just got off set. Uh, Y'all are hilarious, by the way. I just want to tell you. Thank you. The comedy <laughs> is real. The comedy is real. So Kenny Burns, uh, icon in the game. Somebody mm -hmm. who constantly reinvents himself. I think you're doing a movie now, right? Yeah, we're doing a limited TV series called Fight Night. Fight Ooh. Night. Kevin Hart, Samuel L. Jackson, Taraji P. Henson, Don Cheadle, Terrence Howard, Clifton Pye, Chloe Bailey's in it, Lori Harvey. The dream okay. is real. Oh. That's incredible. Dream is real. So how you get involved in that real quick? Yeah. Um, I actually heard about it over 20 years ago. Um and a guy by the name of Jeff Keating, I know, on the life rights. And when we launched Revolt Television in 2013, I was just mm -hmm. trying to go buy up all, you know what I'm saying, the IP I wanted to make. You know what I mean? I figured, like, we could be doing movies. We could do television. We got this network. And uh, Puff didn't see the vision. And then I actually went to Kevin Hart first. You like that, Shotty? <laughs> I went to Kevin Hart first. But Kevin Hart and Will Smith had Uptown Saturday Night was – Basically, the news clip, uh, newspaper clips and became Uptown Saturday yeah. off of my story, Fight Night. But long story short, that didn't work out. And now Kevin is uh, and Heartbeat is producing this alongside Will Packer and Will Packer Production. So the dream is really real. That's incredible. Yeah. So, OK, I want to start with a topic that I spoke about. You this is how this whole thing came about, actually. You I think I think you text me or you call me. I think you called me about yeah. this. And you wrote on you wrote on Instagram that um we should have somebody married on to talk about it. So we talked about how long you've been married, by the way. Uh 25 years. This October 16, 2024. It'll be 25 years. And shout Final out. Applause. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. 
<laughs> Xander said, congratulations. <laughs> Not for kids, my baby in here. That's Not amazing. Xander, man. So, um, all right, you've been married for 25 years. Your lovely wife, Jessica. Yeah. Um, shout out to her. So, okay, here's how this whole thing came about. We were talking, and, and I said that I personally think in a marriage, mm -hmm. you should have three bank accounts. You should have the husband has his own personal bank account. Yeah. The wife has her own personal bank account. And then you have a joint family account inside the joint family account is when you put money in for groceries or your son's basketball game or school or vacation or whatever. And then, you know, that way it's, it's not commingling of everything. You have some level of um, still independence, but you also have the family structure. And um, a lot of people agree with it. A lot of people disagree with it. What's your what, okay? So, what's your thoughts on this? Um, well, first of all, I salute you because you were married. So, I think you. And that's a married. little. That's a little little known fact. So, I brought to you by. Oh, uh, we talking? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I think it's valuable that you have been through the experience, and then you're also speaking as a now single man. Um, I think. When you hide the money and whether you are literally hiding it or not, if you do not share a bank account, I think it gets weird. And the only reason I think it gets weird, because if you're young and we can we can put it in two buckets. If you're young and you grow together, mm -hmm. the thing was not a thing. You know what I mean? Prior to you might have had the skill set, whoever the breadwinner, you might have had the, the 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 wherewithal to get in the industry and grow. But I don't think that, you know what I'm saying, it'd be right not to share that from the jump. Now, we have never had separate accounts. We have always had the same account. And I've always been the breadwinner. But 15 years ago, I think or so, so maybe 10 years into our marriage, she became the back office for everything Kenny Burns and our mm. parent company, Studio 43. So she got to be involved in it. But I've never, it's never been a money thing. And I think, like you both know, just from headlines and probably people you know, when money gets involved, it gets super weird. And so I think on one hand, you have to always make your partner, whoever the breadwinner is, your, your, the, the wife or the husband, you got to make them feel comfortable. If they're not comfortable, don't feel like what they're bringing to the table is equal value to money. You're already in the tailspin. And so that's why when I, I called you and I literally said that, I was like, why did I put that on the fucking comments? Because sure enough, <laughs> everybody was commenting yeah. on my comment. But I was literally thinking about like, it just causes issues when you when when you don't know where the money is. Now, I'm not talking about in the other case with gentlemen like yourself. You have amassed fortune. You have amassed a certain, you know, uh, amount of money without said partner since you don't have one at the moment. So there can be, you know, things put in place to where you're protected. But if you start from the bottom and you build, I think it's only right to share that. And then to your point, and both of you, I think, said it, it was just the player way. I think you let it kind of drift on that people were commenting because you actually made good points. It was just the, what's the, what the thing y'all kept saying? Nah, no, <laughs> nope, nah. No way, no how. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, but, but again, it gets lost in the actual brilliant shit you said, because if you do meet somebody and you have all the bread and they don't, and they don't want to work, there has to be guidelines, right? Because this is something you've amassed. This is something that, you know, you accomplish, right? And then there can be other things you accomplish together and then you can share according to, but I didn't, I wasn't mad at that part of your performance. Yeah. Um, Kenny, you seem like in a very peaceful place, everything is, is going well. Um, was there at any points where there was any conflict when you were doing it that way or has everything been peaceful throughout the journey, like financially for you and yours? No, absolutely. There's always something. It's never not going to be something because you're human. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The key is to grow together, though. I think the majority of the, the, the people that you see having 20 clips, 25 clips getting divorced because they didn't grow together. And yeah. you have to be able to grow with your partner. You might not grow in the same mindset and or ways, but you got to respect the growth from your partner. I had an argument Saturday. I called her. I was almost at the crib. I was like, I know you're studying for your, your master's, baby. You want something to eat? I'm about to pull on our street, but I could go back behind me. Or I can go around the house, get you whatever you want. She took it as because I said Houston's that I was going to go to Houston's. You know what I'm talking about? On my way. Real quick. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I asked her that she want to come, but it became a thing because she felt like I wasn't being sincere. I don't know how she got that equation, but that was Saturday. And we're going to make it 25 more years and, and get the 50 clip. So it's not, I think you got to look at things also too in relationships like some shit just ain't worth arguing about. It's like, you know who you marry, you know, you know, I travel for, you know, beautiful women are around me all the time. You know, all these things. She's never given me a problem about that. I get issues about whether my, do you want some food was sincere? Those are not things to get a divorce over. And that's what I would encourage people also in their relationships. You have to really know your partner because mm. I don't think anyone can make any clips in the 10, 15, 20, 25 without knowing their partner. Well, let me ask so you, how did you know she was the one? Man, I think it was something we built. It's funny. I, I'm doing a documentary. It's uh, titled WMM until I announced the title. But I was looking at her interview from 2017. We do this family vacation every year and we were in Anguilla and she was so nonchalant about talking about how she felt about me. And then the guy, my brother, Yuri Israel, who's editing this masterpiece was like, y'all are funny as shit. Like you wouldn't think you were married all this time. The way she kind of just like, well, we were just dating. It was nonchalant. You know, we kind of whatever. But I think you got to have that that energy. Like, I'm going to ride the wave. I, if you mm-hmm. love someone, I don't think it's that we ever really knew. I said I knew. I asked her. I told her the night I saw her at the Sky Bar in Chicago that I was going to marry her. She thought right. I was playing. Right? But then again, her point in the documentary was like, I guess I didn't know, but I knew that Christmas we met in October. I think she said she spent Christmas with me and she knew. But you kind of got to go with the flow. And that's one of the things she said in the the documentary. We never stopped going with the flow. So let me ask you this. Uh, What is some you you you've reached a high level of success and you was around a lot of people, right? Jay-Z, Diddy, high profile people, especially in your music career days In that type of life. What are some things that um, a woman has to deal with? And what are some things that a man has has to deal with? to have a successful marriage because there's going to there's going to be some things that you, you're going to have to just um uh, compromise on or, or just without, deal question. With. without question uh i'm going to bust a shot for whoever was encouraged to hear this but i you know i feel like at the end of the day that business or anything in entertainment is unforgiving to relationships you're going to always be tried you're going to be you know i i've been outside for a long time yeah. And the offers have went from you cute to like me and my girl want to, you know what I mean? So it's like it's <laughs> a different era now. So in, a, in, in what y'all are playing with is fire, you know what I mean? And it's almost destructive, right? Like there's no fantasy anymore. You wake up every day, you see everything a woman has to offer physically. Um, you wake up every day and you, you know, I'm, I'm so disgusted when I see these girls fighting and the dudes, every rapper got a pistol. And it's just, I want to be so high that I can't function. But I think I've seen the business already start in an unforgiving place as it adheres to relationships. But it's an unforgiving place to culture now. Like, Absolutely. you can't even get game anymore. I did an episode on the Kenny Byrne show that came out on Tuesday. And it's called the feeling because there is no feeling. When my mama and them used to play A House Is Not A Home by Luther Vandross, I wasn't probably old enough to start, you know, f- can I curse on here? Yeah, absolutely. I wasn't old enough to start fucking, but I had emotions. Emotion behind it. You understand me? And when I saw in 84 when Prince came out with Purple Rain and the way he touched Apollonia and the thing, it's like you had visuals, and I'm not just trying to be on the sexual side or love side, but I'm saying in general. For every Boys in the Hood, we had a Love Jones. For every... You know, we had a counter and I, I think the business to answer your question never really was, you know, adoring of someone like me because when I'm my own, like I walk in the room and the energy changes. So I never got the encouragement to like, let's let's propel him up. Right. I always had to take or earn, you know, what was mine and not take from the point of like shitting on nobody or taking from someone, but like take my positioning in life. Yeah. And we got to do that. But I think that that business taught me that as well um and looking at the game now i just think we need more of that you know what i mean spirited energy where people feel seen you know andre harrell got arrested there i never until andre and i had i was in the music business a, a while before andre but he taught me about art he taught me the value of collecting art the value of real estate when i met this motherfucker, he had a you know the west side of you know new york where 
black folk ain't really populated a lot. He had a whole floor, the top of the apartment, like, you know, my first Basquiat, like, you know, just things. So, you know, we don't have teachers anymore. That's why I love what y'all do with the financial literacy, because you're actually giving people hope. You're giving people blueprints. And we don't have those no more. So I never really was taught, you know, um, the things I wanted to learn, those things I had to learn on my own. But I was proud to be in a business that taught me the sport of life. What do women have to put up with and what do men have? Oh, to put up with? Yeah, women, <laughs> women have to deal. Well, women have to know first and foremost who they're getting involved with. Um, I think if a woman, you know, my wife told me when we first got married, I fell in love with everyone. No, well, let me get that right. Let's edit that. My wife said when we first got together, she said, I fell in love with what they all will fall in love with. Just don't bring that shit to my house. And all that meant was respect me. It wasn't a green light to go be ignorant and do whatever I want to do in the street. It was respect me. Don't ever make me feel like I'm not the one. You know, and I think that that's what, you know, a woman has to feel. She has to know that her man makes her feel that secure to be able to deal with the things that they do. And then we as men have to respect that. You know, I mean, this ain't the era where y'all could go outside and be with somebody and not be seen. So mm -hmm. I'm telling all of y'all young players that think that's the game and y'all going to be. No, you're going to be on a social site. You're going to be on somebody's phone, especially if you have some notoriety and it's not going to work out in your favor. But I mean, even, even not even so much. They got to deal with that. But as far as he if, all right, if a dude's getting money, right, he might not have time to call you. He might not be, you know, at your feet all, all day. And the attention the attention that you might seek as a woman, if you really out here moving and grooving, that you may not have the time. Right, right. You got to make the time if you want her, vice versa. She got to make the time if she wants you. And let me tell you, young motherfuckers, one thing. You're going to get to the soft life era. You're going to get to the motherfucking era where you're tired and you want to relax and you want to sit on your bread, travel the world, and yeah. you don't want her to turn up on your motherfucking ass when you're ready to have a soft life. Because a lot of you motherfuckers can't handle it. And I'm not talking about you two. I'm just saying people who be talking that shit. No, I can't handle it. I ain't going to hold you. No. And we listen, men, Ooh, men, no. men need security, too. It's yeah. just when it's just at what age does security matter the most? Mm. Yeah. When you were coming up to the music industry, um, I mean, you're a legend in your own right. Like to me, you set the architecture for the party scene in Atlanta. Thank when you were getting all that hate, like how did you deal with it? I ain't gonna mention no names, but yeah, some icons who was hating. Like, yeah. how do you deal with that? Navigate, continue to build. I'm being real. Yo, no, listen, I was in the A when this was happening. Fine. Yeah, yo, go. He take the whole branding, marketing plan. What is we talking about? Yeah, so. no, it, it's a thing, and and I think everybody know how to act when I show up. Mm. That's that's just real. Like, you know, people can say what they want. That's why I was saying to you, too, about your comments. Like texture is good for people to understand why you can say these things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I've never been one. I know where all the bodies are buried. I could if I wanted to be, you know, messy, like, you know, yeah. I, I could be messy. But it's not about that. Because yeah. guess what? You know that I know. And we all know that when I come, everything good. Because I'm only here to get, to bring a good time. And everybody who grew up with me knows I'm with the shits too. I'm not with the shits anymore. I don't want no smoke with nobody. Yeah. At the end of the day, though, like, that's how you got here. That's how we got here. So let's not act like we don't. And I have receipts. I've never let anyone erase me or my contribution. I put out meaningful content. I have meaningful relationships where people will never forget my name. And that's what yeah. you got to do. You know what I'm saying? So that's. I think that does that answer his fucking question, Rashad? You just let me have it. I'm surprised you ain't yelling me yet. We ain't talking about Kanye, so I can't yell. <laughs> <laughs> um, how you how do you feel about um, the OGs in the game as far as leadership? Do you think that they let the younger generation down, or they set a good enough example? I don't feel the OGs was really hands on. They were more mm -hmm. so like follow my my lead, just watch what I'm doing, right? That's exactly the blueprint of the Andre Harrell Puff era. How do you feel about that blueprint? Uh, I don't think it works long term, um, especially when the OG wants to be the youngin. I actually just said this um, on the 90s episode of the Kenny Burns show. And I was um, and we could talk about this another time. But I was talking about how the West Coast, East Coast beef set us on a trajectory to forget about ownership. And it became all about materialism. And it's a whole science. Mm -hmm. I that. But I also think that when Andre went to Uptown, I'm sorry, from Uptown to Motown, he wanted to be more like Puff instead of be him. 
And with the iconic brand like Motown, all he had to do was put the Uptown flavor on Motown and make hit records. That was his blueprint. You know what I'm saying? But no, he wanted yeah. to be hot and he wanted to make billboards and have them all over the New York City trains. And God rest the dead, I used to talk to him about this shit all the time and have to remind him. But I think to, to answer your question, the OGs want to be young. They don't, they don't respect where they are in life and are comfortable with being senior. And there's nothing wrong with being senior because with seniority comes knowledge. With seniority comes experience. Things that, just like I would call you when I first met you, Rashad, I know you was like, who is this light-skinned motherfucker trying to tell me? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it was more like, yo, I see you. I see what you're trying to do. Here's my experience. I never, yeah. I never put shackles on you from like making you feel like, yo, you got to listen to me. I, I never did that. Yeah. I would only call you and Troy and be like, yo, I see y'all. I see what you're doing. And th these are some of the things you want to think about. And that's how OG should lead. Yeah. Is it insecurity why they don't give that advice? Is it lack of financial stability? Like, why do you think? And then, because when the young guns come up, they don't want to hear nothing the OGs have to say and they get mad. But it's like, you didn't give no game until Facts. it was too late. So wh why do you think that is? Um, I think it's insecurity because a lot of people don't have what they front like they have. You know what I mean? Like the money's not matching. Like the car doesn't match the wife and the wife doesn't match the crib and the kids. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The whole thing is, 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 is faux. It's yeah. a whole social experiment and, and they and they feelings because they don't have what they have. Now, if you think about what my generation made the industry do for what they did to the cold crush, y'all are you 10 X in that, you know what I'm saying? And the opportunities socially and digitally that were not there for us are happening, but we're not supposed to motherfucking be upset about it. We supposed yeah. to do what I do with y'all. Like you supposed yeah. to empower and support because guess who's going to keep the old heads around the young motherfuckers. And then a lot of these young motherfuckers are also, too, doing the dumbest shit on the planet and don't want nobody to tell them nothing. That's the only disconnect, I think, in generations that's different. These youngins are getting money for being dumb. These youngins are getting money for showing up doing stupid shit, and they're trying to outdo the stupid shit. But when someone tells them, you're hating. No, I don't want you to die. Yeah. I don't want you to get caught up. Like, you know, it's like the whole gangster shit. Like, everybody has to talk about gangbanging everybody got to do lean and smoke weed and do cocaine. Every girl got to go to Brazil or Colombia or Detroit to get the jobs. Like what? Yeah. I'm not serious about Detroit doing it, but you, that was the joke. But the point I'm trying to make, like this is where we are. And so culturally we really have a problem. So let me ask you this. I'm interested in your question, Rashad. For sure. Okay. I'm interested to hear this East coast, West coast theory. But before that, um, Duval, little Duval, yeah, put a, put a tweet out the other day. I don't know if you saw it. Mm -hmm. And you're from DC, but you you really from Atlanta? Like you rep Atlanta? Like yeah, I rep, like Atlanta, repping like, both. But yes, yes. But you're like Atlanta, like Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like Andre three thousand in Atlanta. So um, <laughs> he, he put a tweet out and said, DC women, which you're from DC. DC women are just as fine as Atlanta women, but they actually have real jobs. I'm. I'm paraphrasing. They actually, paraphrasing have, yeah. they actually have real jobs. Yeah. Um, and they don't just go to the club trying to get bottles or pretty much saying like they actually got a good head on their shoulders in Atlanta. And I kind of didn't agree with that. I think Atlanta gets a lot of hate. I think Atlanta gets now there's a lot of silly shit that happens in Atlanta. Let's be honest. Hell but yeah. I think that Atlanta gets a lot of hate unnecessarily especially from black people, which is weird because hated to love it. Atlanta is still the Mecca of black America. No question. It's a new chocolate city, which DC was a chocolate city. So how do you, yeah. how do you feel about his comment? And how do you feel about what I think that Atlanta gets unnecessary hate from black America outside of Atlanta? Yeah. Great question. First of all, Lil Duval is way more intelligent than people. Yeah, he gives off. Um, he's definitely smart like a fox mm -hmm. and the things he regurgitates are the things that he wants to bring attention to the things he doesn't say. He wants people thinking about why he's not saying it. But to answer your question about DC women versus Atlanta women, I think Washington DC was raised to come up having a job in the government specifically and having this type of life, right? When you're, when you're born into something, it's like being a Redskins fan. Now, commanders, I can't help it. I hate it. I want to really just bust my gun and just go crazy. Then half my city is, is DC, you know, Dallas Cowboy fans. And it drives me crazy. I do not understand how you were born 
in DC and you're ruining. Wait for real? Sex. Oh no, it's unbelievable. That's but, crazy. I know yeah, that. It's unbelievable. I just I don't want to bust my gun anymore. But the the <laughs> point is, yes, women in DC are were in especially in my era, they were kind of trained to grow up, work for the government, be self sufficient, and this, that, and the third. I'm not saying that didn't happen in Atlanta at all. I'm just giving you what DC is now. Atlanta is a place where it is a social experiment now. It stood on the shoulders of civil rights and we're all mm -hmm. in. It came into an era in the 90s where Criss Cross sold 4 million records. LaFace painted, you know, with um, in 92, they sold 4 million records, the biggest in rap history. But, you know, that was Atlanta for real. That wasn't mm -hmm. LaFace planting the flag and other people like myself coming here and building our careers. But then I don't think Atlanta's identity was in music as far as like the entire culture. I don't think Criss Cross was culture. The biggest thing culturally to ever come out of Atlanta started with Outkast and then went to Jeezy and Tit and then, yeah. you know, in that era. Yeah. And then it got more sure. popularity and grew, right? So I don't think the women in Atlanta, um, you know, were kind of put into positions because there's no industry here like the government in DC. Yes, yeah, so the infrastructure isn't there. The infrastructure is not here yeah. for jobs. Let's just, let's say like, like the government job. Right. You know, where you can go from one to 13, have these benefits retire like that, that. That doesn't, you know, Georgia power is here. You know what I mean? And now it's an it's it's entrepreneurs everywhere. And there's amazing cuisine and food and all the things. But I think that's historically the difference between D.C. women and Atlanta women. Not, I, what do you, not, not making either better. I'm just what about, saying, what about the hate exactly about job? I have to be clear what, on this. What about the hate? What about the hate from from just Atlanta, period? Is it warranted? The hate from what's, what's the question with that people part? hate on Atlanta. They say Atlanta is the home of scammers. They say Atlanta is the only open. reason that's tag is because we was the only city open during the pandemic. That shit was not like that. They said everybody's front. They say everybody's fronting. They they got rented cars. They got rented houses. Yeah. It, it's not real. It's Hollywood. Like, you know, you know, the, what no, it's not, the spiel everywhere. I don't think that's just Atlanta. Atlanta is significant because, again, of the history and why we're here. Atlanta significant because of the industry we created. Now we talk about the government with the women in DC. We've created a music business. People come here and have come here for their entire lives to make hit records. To break it. Yeah. Period. Now, not only we shooting at assembly, which just got a 25 year lease from universal. We're shooting fight night, the million dollar heist at assembly. Like without a Tyler Perry, that building wouldn't be built. Mm -hmm. Tyler has nothing to do with assembly, but you get what I'm saying. So there's industry here. We are the blackest, most richest, blackest city in the motherfucking world as far as I'm talking about culture. You know what I'm talking about? And then we have a lot of opportunity here now via those industries for jobs. So I, I would say that is it Generation Z that's now? Is it Z? I yeah, believe so. yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, well, if whatever it is, excuse us if we don't know the fact, but I think it's Z. They actually have a blueprint of industry, but when when these women that are adults now didn't have a, you know, it was music business. It was, but the music business was also becoming show your ass and titties to be heard. It was also coming. I mean, you look at women's rap, look at women's rap alone, and what's happening with that. That's not an industry that's going to sustain. You're going to crash and burn. You know what I'm saying? Just like hip hop for men, you're going. We are crashing and burning. So it's not, you know what I mean? And then, because we've been the most misogynistic humans on the planet, but women are as misogynistic as men and using sex as a weapon, not, not freedom or revolution, or we're making these statements. No, we just want to be hoes. Let's Is that the doing of the rappers or the doing of the labels? If we're going to be honest though. No, I, I'm with you in great fucking question, but it's, it's our fault. We can't put nothing on them after 96. After 96, we saw money like we never seen in the music business, but we still let them have control. After the East Coast, West Coast thing, nothing was the same. Nothing was the same. It was all materialism, money, and how much can I get? Guess what? I'm going to keep doubling down on that because the deals, little do y'all know, the deals were based on, you know what I'm saying, like the, the, the big three, four. I mean, if you look at the early 90s, it was Dre and Shug, then Puff, then Jay. Right. And then you had other sprouts here and there. Right. Yeah. We talking about the big three of the 90s. That's the big three. So what's your what's your take on this East Coast, West Coast? Yeah. Hip -hop, tell us more. Your hip hop head. So I'm interested to hear, to hear this theory. Yeah, I just think materialism took over to the point of destruction. We don't have any value in music because we never owned anything.
So when Universal decides they want to fucking fire over a thousand people to save two hundred seventy one million dollars, we have no control over that. Yeah, that's insane. But if you look at what Russell Simmons started, but Dre perfected, then Puff actually did an amazing job with hiring all the black executive superheroes that ever existed. But it was never enough for them to grow within an ecosystem. Think about it. Would 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 Rick Ross own all that he brought to the table in spirits and outside of music if Puff gave him ownership in Ciroc when it was time to give him ownership? We we lost train of thought of ownership. We do want an independent and we're going to say fuck whoever to get it. But after the, the East Coast, West Coast, beat, we forgot about the who we were. We forgot about the charts, how many hits we had on the radio, how we were running culture. It was not even just a like you couldn't breathe without black music. And then if you look at where we are now, to, to Ian's point, the smart motherfuckers, and because yeah. mind you, Napster happened in 99, early 2000. Yeah. It changed the music business as we know it. So if you look at what streaming is, if you look at all these fucking ringtone ass fucking artists on fucking TikTok, all this shit was designed. This shit was part of the play, but we yeah. weren't smart enough to take advantage of it. Because guess what ain't happening in 90 fucking six? And I'm just keep going to 96. Without Suge and Puff, and I'm not big shout to Nelly, big shout to Ludacris, big shout to whoever came out in the 90s. But if it wasn't for them and the type of money they were they committing, were it was unreal. It was a print impress, yo, for Jimmy. And so my point is, like, they, they literally started, it was a money thing. It was a money grab. What, what is music now? A money grab. But the problem is, to what point? Self-destruction? Because that's where we are. But even before 96, if I'm a 96 stand, right? Shout to Simon Hope. Best, yeah. best year ever. B big facts. Yeah. But they were selling destruction before then. No, but it wasn't. If you look at the 80s, let's, let's think about this. I just said it earlier. We had a yin for every yang in black culture. Mm -hmm. We had an option for every motherfucking dysfunctional motherfucker on the planet. And I want to say this because if you look at the 90s, bro, we sampled the music that gave respect back to the old heads, right? We motherfucking made hit records. We crossed over where hip hop became the number one genre. It wasn't the number one genre of music. Yeah. God bless Run DMC, LL Cool J, Eric B and Rakim, all the greats from the 80s. It wasn't them. Yeah. They crossed over okay. like oh, hip hop's yeah. here, but the 90s took the fucking whole music shit. The 90s? Yeah. It took it all. And Big Shout, I mean, I don't want to give R. Kelly too much credit because he's a pedophile, but at the end of the day, like, there was no music like that being made. He's one of the greatest artists in the history of the world. And if you looked at what he even touched with his pen in the 90s. Yeah. Well, the, the 90s the nineties is uncomparable to any um, decade Era. ever. 1996 is the best year ever. In, in 1996 for rap music, some of the albums that came out, Tupac, All Eyes on Me. I believe that came out in 96. Yep. Fire. Um, February. Nas, it was written. Reasonable Fire. doubt. Reasonable doubt. doubt. Um, Didn't Buster Rhymes come out in 96 too? I think, I, I, think, I think the purple yeah. tape. I think the purple tape came out purple in 96. 96. Crazy year. 95, 96. You had basketball. Oh, you, had, you had Allen Iverson. You had Clockers. You had Spike Lee putting out the movies. The culture it was, was just. And it was so voice. crazy. It was so crazy. So that's why I'm surprised to hear that you say that that era ruined hip hop. Because to to me, that era was the reason that I fell in love with hip hop. That was the breath of fresh air of hip hop. Yeah, I think the drug era ruined hip hop. No drug era. Well, first of all, but I'm not saying that music wasn't made post '96 and was good. Oh no, what were we talking about? Crack. Oh, five, four, <laughs> five, four, three, two. No, but the crack era in the '80s. Like in the eighties, you got to think about this, the conscious rap from self-destruction to KRS one, like to the beginning of the nineties with diggable planets and outcast and then goody mob and Lauren Hill yeah. and the Fuji's like, when you think about like what it was, it, it's not like drugs were the onness of music. You, you had long passed that shit cause we was getting money. So when you look at the nineties, you're looking at money and materialism, having it, and that's what I'm saying about the destructive. Not that all the music in the 90s made the the the, the hits of the last 10 years. They made mm -hmm. people do Percocets and pills and all the shit. No, but it was materialism over art became a part of the discussion. They were making meaningful music, but post that, it was all about money and what you could have. And with that comes drug usage. With that comes 
you know, uh, promiscuous lifestyles, all types of things come into play when you think about that. So I don't think it was drugs because to be honest with you, we were smoking weed in the nineties. That was the chronic era, the entire nineties. These motherfuckers doing cocaine, heroin, meth, fent sprinkling fentanyl like it can't kill you. Yeah. And then they popping designer drugs that's breaking down their organs. They're not even going to be able to live to, to, to spend the shit. But, but to the materialism part, because all this financial literacy was not available, I got two part with two questions. Like, why didn't the financial or the record executives teach more about business then? But if you look at Shug, Puff, Jay Prince, they were almost like financial icons in the community. Like, being in business, you know, this in the 1980s and, and early 90s, being black was almost an afterthought. Yeah. So they became our financial icons, our Warren Buffett's, our um sources of inspiration so i think the materialism it was robert smith before we knew who robert smith was no big facts yeah but i don't think that they wanted to share it and i say that mm -hmm. because they were houston texas with rap a lot they were new york city they were la ain't nobody want to share that it's almost like when la planted the flag in atlanta yeah dallas austin and jermaine were making hits prior to la you know what i'm saying but la saw the value and let me have him do the records all right i'm gonna have him do tlc i'm gonna have him do usher i'm gonna, so but they they had such control over the industry and i don't know them so i'm not, and i know puff he definitely didn't want to give nobody no shot at being him but i can't speak for Sh suge but if you look at how suge's played out suge is the same motherfucking person it worse because he was threatening and killing you know what i'm saying but then you look at Jay allegedly Trump. i mean allegedly allegedly <laughs> dr simon hold your head <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make is that, you know, Jay Prince seems like the only, and I don't know him, I know his yeah. son very well, but he seems like an honorable man. Absolutely. You know I mean? We're then, trying to get a blueprint up and blackballed him for it. it exactly. Right. So, so, and, and, and I'm talking about them because those are some of the biggest representations of what you spoke on. Well, well, let me, let me, well, let me, let me, let me, because this, this brings up a good, a good talking point. And I feel like this is one of the reasons why our platform, Earn Your Leisure, why Market Mondays, why, while we shook the game, I think we surprised a lot of people, right? Yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I personally think that the previous blueprint to be successful when you're black is climb up the ladder and make sure you kick the ladder down um, and burn the exactly ladder. What off. I'm saying. Exactly and what I'm saying. So, so that count, we're, we're counterculture, right? Like we're counterculture to just provide free information and share and, and, and do these different things. Um, that's something that I think wasn't around back then. So when you look at our previous icons, they, they're not looked at as people that have shared a lot of information. Is there, my question is this, is it their responsibility to share information? Cause I spoke to Steve Stout about this before, but I was just, I was listening to a whole bunch of people. Right. And he's like, um, yeah, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> I'm like, why? He's like, look, it's not he's like he was like, it's not their responsibility to teach people. He was like, that's your responsibility. He was like, so you study what they do, you get the information, and now you're the bridge from the clouds to the ground. He's like, this whole it has to work like that. He's like, their job, you can't expect them to be teachers because they're not teachers. You're a teacher. And when he said that to me. It it's actually it made sense. It made sense. So is it is this somebody's responsibility from the from the culture to share information or no? But that's what I was saying, because you can't really erase the Internet no more. You can't erase the Internet, nor you nor can you erase what you've done in life. And I'm talking to all y'all scammers out there like this shit is getting ridiculous. Mm. It's getting ridiculous to the point where you're weird. Your <laughs> girl is weird for dating, you knowing you a fucking scammer because they want you to fall. They want mm. you to fail. And all we do post-1996 is make everything about this big moment when we're not living like that. Then we got to do the extra shit we're not supposed to do to live this type of life. And then we in a fucking, you know what I'm saying, a, a tornado we can't get up out of. And that's, that's the thing that I'm most sad about now for my people because, like, I don't even do celebrity interviews anymore. Y'all know me. Pandemic, I interview from the president of the United States to your favorite rapper's favorite rapper to your favorite, you know, whatever. But that was yeah. because I'm unpacking shit. It wasn't about no movie. How you doing? You all right? I didn't even know I had childhood trauma until I was walking other people through theirs.
Mm. But see, now it's so easy. Somebody cousin can have an interview with some famous motherfucker and it go viral. And then the real media motherfuckers don't get no love. If you're not talking crazy about a motherfucker, nobody's going to hear you. And that's why, like, I was, you know, encouraging y'all from the door to watch who you are associating with because you have such validity and authenticity in your brand. That's why this is going to go for y'all, because to have honest conversations, what people need to hear. But we also still need to be responsible. The only, re the only reason I ever mentioned Puff is because it's a real situation and the motherfuckers going through hell right now. And I don't want none of you motherfuckers to go through that. Mm. I made it out unscathed. How my name ain't in nothing. Cause yeah. I know when the fuck to get the fuck on and you motherfuckers out there don't know when to get the fuck on. Ain't nobody. Listen, I'm telling y'all this and this is real talk at the highest level of business. Everybody got some fucked up shit with them. If you do not believe me, read. Absolutely. All you gotta do is read. I'm talking about the best of the best. Elon Musk, Kanye West, Jeff Bezos. If you want to read jobs. Yep. Steve, jo you can find And when you watch, the Steve Jobs movie, you're like, damn, how do people deal with him? But my point to you is, it is all a means to an end. Nobody's saying walk to Brooklyn for cheesecake. My thing is go in, get, get whatever you want. I'm going to keep busting that gun. Right. Go in, get everything you want out the situation, but have a plan because, ladies and gentlemen, your integrity will be called upon one day, and you got to be prepared to bust a move. But, but let me ask you this, because it, it is a... Um, and we haven't talked about this situation too much, but it is it is a learning it's a learning point, right? And it's a learning experience, and it's almost like a Shakespearean play, like the rise and fall of a black billionaire, right? Um, where we saw we saw somebody rise to the highest level possible, highest level celebrity possible, name around the world, number one spokesperson, and and we we we're watching his fall in real time, and. It's, it's entertaining for a lot of people, but it's also it's, it should be a learning point. Right. And you you somebody that you knew Puff a long time before we we ever met him since I was 16. What's the how do we how do we avoid how do we avoid what can we learn from this situation <laughs> and how can we avoid this situation for the young entrepreneurs, for the young hustlers that's coming up? Well, we're going to have another political episode coming up soon. I, I feel a, a blackout <laughs> episode coming Made up. It. But I think we should first and foremost propel people that, you know, you know, I think we, we put a lot of false prophets in pocket. We put a lot of people that talk a good game, but haven't shown that they're really about the community or really about the culture. So I think we need to do a little bit more research. You know, what I'm talking about just because they went viral doesn't mean that they're capable. And I think if we can, like, you know, inject that into our frontal lobe and to our spirits, Mm -hmm. You know, it will resonate, you know, and then I think, too, we need to hold people accountable. You know, it's like, all right, youngin, I see you. I'm telling you how to get it. But if you keep doing this, you're going to get this. And you think somebody hating on you until they're right. But who can hold Puff? Nobody can. You can't hold somebody accountable. That's a my billionaire. That's my, the God, my God. Yes, the universe is holding yeah. them responsible. What are you talking you about? You, you see Floyd. He's isolated, right? Then nobody nobody can talk. When you get to a certain point but, in time, but, nobody. But you don't have to talk to him, Scotty. What, what's happening to Puff right now is. is, is, is doing a God in the cartel. But what I'm saying is how do you avoid that from happening? You can't avoid it if you don't listen. That's why I respect your crew. Y'all talk to each other. You can got to move with integrity. But that's about propelling. The reason I fucking believe in y'all and I give you all every fucking contact, whatever, when you ask, is because I think you're going to be responsible at the next phase, nigga. But we Sorry. also got we got checks and balances. We got we got Ian. We got Troy. We got. No, but that's my point. That's my point. You're when saying you know, what, what's going to keep you from falling off is the right people in place. But we keep propelling the bullshit. That's why I told you early. Stop taking pictures with them motherfuckers. <laughs> a few Ponzi scheme niggas in your pictures. Relax. <laughs> I'm not lying. I didn't say that shit. Good lesson. If I'll pop up in the picture, it's the reason why. No, listen. I, I didn't say I'm going to stay clear. I don't even know them people. <laughs> but I know people. Everybody come. Real OGs get all the information. Yeah. Not because I'm part owner in Ball Alert. But I get all the information. I don't be. I use that shit to help. I use that shit yeah. to motivate, inspire, put people in position. Because that's what we're not doing. We're putting the wrong people in position. But you've but always been that way. Even like when you... Superstar in Atlanta, 07, BMF. You were still operating the same way, off love, That's go, all going to AUC. Yeah, yeah, always operating. I'm going to tell, tell you something else, Shotty. 
I'm going to tell you something. This is why I fuck with you and Ian and Troy and AB. And I'm, if I'm forgetting your name, I love you. You know I love you. But like when I, Mike, I love you, Mike. But when I yes, tell you, Mike. when I tell you, I fuck with you because of your musical taste and the way you carry yourself. See, when I was coming up, it was fucking kill or be killed. It was no massaging. It was no try this. It was no you got it. We're going to see how it goes. It was like kill or be killed. And I think that because my mama and them played them records, happy feelings, golden time of day, mm -hmm. Teddy Pendergrass, come on and go with me. Then I got into my teenage years and I had Force D's, Tender Love, and I had a door by Prince. And I'm in the street though. But when I had to make a stupid fucking decision, I thought about my mama. I thought about the good feelings I had of family. You understand me? And that's the missing link. You don't have that no more. Other than, and, and SZA be saying some crazy shit in her shit, but I love SZA. But I'm just saying, if you look at the messaging, and Summer Walker's, Summer Walker's my, she's not my daughter, but she's my baby girl, like me and my wife. But like, she talks about love and heartbreak more than she talk about anything else. That's why she the fucking one out of the ones. You got to get with music that is sensible and puts you in a mood that gives you emotion and feeling, especially if you don't have it in your household. How you going to know something and you ain't grew up in it? When last time motherfucker been to a family reunion? Can you please tell me? It's Let's been a while. Home. Yeah, black it's culture over. is the greater. It's over. The family reunion era is over. It's family over with. But it can't be because you have a party in New York to celebrate your 40th birthday and all the people you wanted were there. That shows they love and respect you. That's the thing about life. If people love and respect you, they're going to show up for you. But mm -hmm. you keep scamming. It's two ways. It's only, and I'm talking about scam across the board, doing something you know you ain't got the fucking ability to do, but you, you got an opportunity, and yet you stand on somebody else's neck that can really do it better than you, but you're going to stand it. That's scamming to me. Scamming, taking something that's not shows you fucking thieves. Stealing is not going to be beneficial to your life long term or anybody you're involved with. And then half of these motherfuckers got kids, and then I ain't thinking about the babies. Yeah. You got a whole professional life of being an ignorant motherfucker, and you don't think the next... Generation, are you gonna be the same thing? It, it's baffling. KB, before we go, I just want one last question. Just take a deep breath, nigga. Did I hit you in your spirit? No, no, no. <laughs> hey, one last question for me. You said something earlier that I want to revisit. You said women are more misogynist than men. I said women are as misogynistic as men, or even more in some in general or in rap. I think in rap. I said okay, rap. yeah. I think women are being held to standards that are unattainable when you got Amen. when you have 20 year old women whose bodies haven't developed but yet they go on getting butt jobs and boobs i'm like babe have sex have baby you know what i'm saying grow up you know what i'm saying get older shit gonna probably fall where you want it to fall and i don't think they understand the repercussions from that so i don't think women have a fair playing a fair playing field as as they wake up every morning and they are taught to compete and compare to what's on these social and digital sites do you think technology was the ruin of our culture and our music industry? Well, it never was our industry, but the, the industry that we grew up loving. Yeah, we're becoming the robots. I think when you think about like where we are in a you know social digital era that really it placates on destruction. There's nothing mm -hmm. positive that you know seldomly does positivity get through the algorithm. But you damn sure you're gonna see some titties. You damn sure gonna see your ass or two. You damn sure gonna see the girls beating the shit out of each other. Or, or who the fuck are we? With the with the the mothers of civilization are fighting each other and being prompted to. That's why I don't fuck with Nick Cannon no more. It's like you already wait what? What? Yeah. what? Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Uh, all the violence we gonna talk about. Nick, what? Wait, what Nick do? Dog, he has a show on Zeus that's perpetuating the bullshit. What's it? What's and it called? I know Nick. I don't know what the it's called bullshit. <laughs> it's called <laughs> but it's like it's like it's yeah. like you're taking wild and out and you making it about women beefing. I don't want to see queens in that mode. I don't want to see queens fucking fighting. They are the fucking portals to civilization, past, present, and future. How are we gonna be anything without our women? You niggas is retarded for doing that. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say the word retarded, but I have a retarded cousin, so I can't say it. But my <laughs> point is, you motherfuckers are the worst motherfuckers because it's about money. You can't tell me that's about culture, and that's my mm -hmm. point from 96 till today. It, exactly. well, my, my, well, you my got last point, who was outside, yeah. by the way. He was outside. He know better. 
<laughs> do we technically have a culture if all of our influences came from media properties that we never owned? I always say I don't like Vlad and all the shit that he does, but when people be like, he a vulture, I'm like, he's participating historically the same way Jimmy Iovine did. If you go through the eras, the history, yada, yada, like what culture do we have? Bro, it is a undefined, needed to figure out question. Um, we are not culture right now. I, I refuse to believe this is black culture. Yeah. We had people living and dying so that we could have a right to vote. We had people living and dying so that you can go to schools yeah. and have education. When people lived and died through the 80s battling drug addiction and all the shit that they permeated in our communities. We didn't do that shit. We yeah, didn't bring that shit over here. I almost want to say they made crack because they knew it would be a more horrific version of the sexy drug white people did and kill black people off like this is not conspiracy this is fact yeah. look at the look at right now y'all name 90 percent of the industry and i guarantee you to be misogyny death destruction and fucking this faux fake ability to be someone you are not that is the bane of our existence that's who we are as a people Fuck yeah. out here. I refuse to believe because if you love your mama, you could get right. If you appreciate your aunties or your grandmama, whoever raised if you got a good relationship with your father, I believe you could change. But, bro, we got people with, with full families in the suburbs yeah. gang banging. I said on my podcast the other day, when I was a kid 40 years ago, when I was a kid, there was no gangs in New York outside of fucking gangs, not bloods, crips. That was some shit that probably was just entering Oklahoma and Kansas City. All this fucking foe, you know, it's like, you weren't even with this, what are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, it's different. You got whole cities depending on people that don't care about you, that don't want, they want you to be a crash dummy. They want you to go out here and do things that they probably are scared to do themselves. But you so young and influent, I'm sorry, you so young and easy to mold, they rather you do the crimes. They rather you take the hits. And it's been like that, to be honest, throughout the history of our world. It's just so yeah. it's so poignant of a question, though, Ian, because what world do we really have anymore? What 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 do we have? Like it's you know, dying. It's dying, bro. Kenny Burns. Always legend himself. Always an enlightening conversation. Touched on many topics. <laughs> <laughs> the boy. Thank you for joining us, man. Uh, always, always, a, always a entertaining conversation and an educational conversation when we talk to the OG, yeah. Kenny Burns. I love how you back so, man. I love and respect y'all, and I appreciate what you bring to the table, man. I hope that your followers and your supporters and your village, you know, are re reciprocating this. You know, what I'm tell, tell the people how they can check you out, what you got going on, all that stuff. Yeah, um, this holiday season, ladies and gentlemen, fight night, the million dollar heist will be coming to Peacock. So mm. look out for that is starring Kevin Hart, Samuel L. Jackson, Terrence Howard, Taraji P. Smith. Um, it's starring uh Don Cheeto. Uh it's so many people. Chloe Bailey's in it, Lori Harvey's in it. Um Man, like shout to Melvin Gregg, who played like in, uh, in uh Snowfall, right. he's in it. Uh, big shout out to Miles, who was in uh, BMF. There's so many amazing people. Big shout out to Ron Rico. Um, he is playing uh, the senator that introduces Muhammad Ali at the fight and has this moment with um, Sam Jackson's character. Anyway, it's a beautiful uh, opportunity for you to learn some history. It's a true story, so I can't wait for you to see that. Also, uh, I have a book coming out this year. WMM is the tentative title. I'll be releasing it at Kenny Burns. Uh, on all platforms very soon. And the Kenny Burns Show, my podcast, comes out every Tuesday. Um, mm -hmm. We're here to inspire impact. Uh, and uh, inspire, what is it? Inspire impact. I forgot the third one. We were here to do it. Yeah. Here to do it. Yeah. Kenny, always a pleasure, my brother. Thank you for joining us, bro. Appreciate you. And the next movie you get, me and Shadi want to be oh, in. The right. Call executive yeah. producer yeah. credit. He named a lot of people. Which yeah, I said, come <laughs> on, man. Yeah. He named a lot of people. Yo, yo, your life in a movie, like, it, hey. Yeah, no, 100%. I got yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, bro. All right, love. Shout out to Kenny. To Kenny. Burns. You no, know, it was supposed to be just a segment about marriage, but um, 
<laughs> there's so many different things, man. It's, a, it's one of these, it's one of these conversations that um I I it's a lot of different things that he talked about that was interesting. Yes. And, um the OG's situation as far as the disconnect and people still trying to um remain relevant and the other side of that is though, and we, we've dealt with it, isn't the point of business to, and I know they're going to kill me for this, but isn't the point of business to build a book of secrets and proprietary information that no one else has so it can remain in your family? For sure. That's why I said I can't even met when Stout, when Stout told me that, and you know, I'm obviously looking at it from a different standpoint. When he told me that I had to be objective, yeah. and, I'm like, and that's why people got to appreciate we we do even more, even yes. more, more because we don't have to give it. Even even school, you got to pay for if you want to yeah. go to a good school, right? Yeah. Whether it's private school or college or whatever. So, um, but nah, shout out to Kenny, man. He's um always a good conversation. Always a good conversation. That was Damn, actually I was shooting that puff. I said, "What is coming <laughs> from?" <laughs> Empty the clip. Hey, got to operate with integrity, though. But but you don't think you can. Hold a billionaire accountable. You can, but I'm just saying it's hard for their pit. Like what Kanye say, it's hard. It's hard to be humble when you're stunting on a jumbotron. The only person that we've seen that reached that Billy, that's in hip hop culture, that that remained out the way is Jay Z, and he's yep. married. And he's married. Like, has a good circle though. Well, that's what I'm saying. So he has yeah, a good married. circle. We seen Kanye go to Mars. We seen Puff. Yeah. You know, be puff for thirty years. We, we, you know, we saw a variety of different things happen to people. And LeBron too. LeBron, he's he's been he stayed out. But once again, his circle. He got he's married. Yeah. He got rich. He got Maverick. He got people around him. But I feel like when you're so high up, and every single person around you is nowhere near that mm-hmm. stratosphere, um, you be it's it's hard to process things correctly because it's like. Yeah. It's like the Floyd, it's the Floyd Mayweather syndrome. You become a demigod on earth. And it's like you could do anything, you could say anything, nobody's gonna say anything back to you. After a while, you 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 don't even think like a regular human being. Ultimately, God and the consumers will humble you though. It's tough. You can only get away with even like we're seeing some other icons in business fall apart now. I think you can only do dirt for so long before it gets revealed. Um you got to be careful, but sometimes, like you said, it's a means to an end to get there, n- no matter what. So, yeah, it's tough. Um, I don't know if Jay Z should have put out all the secrets though, so D Haven could have taken them and built up R- Rocka Girl Records. Like it's a tough balance on on what you shot to D Haven. Appreciate you, um, but but it's tough. Like you, I don't think everybody should share all of their secrets um, because you end up building up your competitive base as well so i think it's a fine balance between the two no i agree, I agree. yeah they're gonna call me a gatekeeper the gatekeeper grifter all of it close the gate close <laughs> the gate um all right well it's been real mm-hmm. it's been real uh i want to say one thing but i want to ask you one question before we leave how do you deal with um envy how you deal with envy i still watch breakfast club every day shout out to shout to Charlotte, man Charlemagne. <laughs> Charles Charles Jeff, Charles Jeff, Charles Jeff. <laughs> but I mean just in life, right? Because I feel like you know, envy, it's one of the, it's a set, it's a seven deadly sin for a reason. Mm-hmm. And the thing about jealousy and envy is that it, it comes in many different forms. And it's actually formless. It's a formless type of thing. You can't always see it. Yeah. It's, not, it's not just always somebody that's cursing you out, that hates you, that's your enemy. It could be your significant other, it could be your That's best friend. One. It could yeah. be somebody that you deal with on a day to day, and it disguises itself. Sometimes envy is not always so overt. It's not an overt thing of like, yo, I I hate that you got those glasses on, bro. Like I'm hating. Hey, hey. Then you can say you can call a person a hater. <laughs> yeah, it comes in subtle. It comes in subtle, subtle, subtle things like, yo, um, yeah, you know, I don't really you know. I, you know, yeah, when they don't have a reason why they don't like you, yeah. oh my. Or or it's like, you know, um, somebody that you came up with, right? And they see you on market Mondays every single week, every single week, every single week. And it's like, 
they ain't hit you in a while. They ain't say, yo, I watched Mark on Mondays. They ain't, you know, it's not, but it's still love when you see them. It's all yeah. good. Blah, 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 blah. But now you're getting attention. You're getting attention. You're getting attention. Then you go to the club and then the girls come to you. And then the girl, and then it's like, after a while, it just, it's one of these Cain and Abel situations, right? Where mm-hmm. the, the envy and the hate drove him so mad that he ended up killing his brother. That's the original, that was the original murder, yeah. right? In the Bible, that's the original murder is that Cain and Abel, they were actually brothers. Um, but the envy and the fact that he wasn't as good as his brother or perceived himself not to be as talented and as good and as favored yeah. as his brother, it actually led him to murder. So um, that's 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 one of these things that's a very tricky situation. That's tough. I mean, how do you deal with it? Um, throughout the years, I've learned just to hang the people who loved you before you became this thing. So my son, mom, dad, got a few core friends. Um, I've also learned to like, I've gone out of my way not to be flashy. Um, I think a rule you and I both share incredibly, uh, never let everyone know where you lay your head at. Facts. Um, I've had some relatives tell me like, Hey, I've had people come over my house and it changed the way they interacted or viewed me because they thought I was doing too well. So for me, don't give them a reason to be envious. Go out of your way to be incredibly kind. Like I understand now while like back in the day, Bill Clinton would shake everybody's hand, will remember name, have a personal story about them to get them to like you to even prevent some disaster from happening. But how to deal. And lastly, especially when hanging with men, hang with men who were cool before who already had motion or something going on. Cause so that envy and jealousy isn't there. Like yeah. even when we be kicking it. Like it'd be me, you, Troy, Ty, but like, all right, cool. We all showing each other love. It's like, why are you doing the same with ish? Right. But I'm like, no, I just fuck with them. Like I'm showing love. Some people will see you and be like, well, even at the party, like why you got on that fur? What's a fur party? <laughs> it's a fur party. Uh, I, I mean, I can't even make a statement for a little market to move, but great. Let me put it back up right back to the red panda jersey. Ah, 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 you EYL shirt. No silk, <laughs> no pony hair. All right, cool. I'll lay low. Nah, you you nah. Gonna train me how to, how to react around you. So I think that's one way is not to, to give them things to be envious about, but also, level up to be in a space is like it when we, you were at dinner with Nas, Nas didn't feel no way about you. It's tough, man. Like you have to be around people that are happy for you or doing better than you for sure. That's, that's the key. It's constantly surround yourself with people that's doing better than you or have something to offer to you. That's, that's a major key, but yeah, I'll let, you, let you go. I know you guys. Yeah, no, no, no. I, hey, we, we got to hit this one topic though. Nah, is Dre a predator? What are we doing? Oh, friend man. of the show, friend of the show. Shout out to Drea. Congratulations. Yeah, we was actually out on the trip when she got shot to the Bahamas trip. This guy different. Shout out to Drea. Shout out to Drea. Nah, nah, you know, um, I actually know her, so you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's a it's a, I don't it's want a to be delicate honest. situation. Very delicate situation. Yeah. Very she cool, though. She always been super cool. But I'll just yeah. talk about the, the the overarching theme of um age differences. Yeah. What is the what, what, what is the proper age difference, right? Me personally, me personally, um, it's one of these things that I feel like I must speak from a male perspective. Yeah. I'm, I'm 40 years old, right? So, um, Early 20s, I don't, I just, That's I, can't, I can't see, you know? I can't, I'm just saying for me personally. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't really have any commonality. It's a certain level of maturity that has not happened yet. It's mm-hmm. two generations past. Um, I just can't see it now. Yeah. He was born after the G Unit album came out. Later 20s, later yeah. 20s, 27, 28, 29, 30. Yeah. 29. That's a <laughs> the Leo room. <laughs> okay, got you. They, they say like divide your age by half and add seven or something like that. That was in Malcolm X. That's a fact. Um, oh, really? Okay. Yeah, that was in the Malcolm X movie. Divide your okay. age by half and add seven. But um, that's that's more of a sweet spot because I feel like now um, 
they're still young enough to appreciate things and they haven't necessarily been completely tainted from everything from having 30 past relationships and so much, you know, drama, not to say that, not to say that older women are not, but I'm just saying, I'm just, you know, but they're still old enough to still be a, a grown woman to still be able to have some responsibility to still understand things. Right. But they still have youthful, they have a youthful spirit about them. So mm-hmm. that I think is, is, is a sweet spot. The reversal that's a little different for me because I'm a, I'm a man. So I don't want to speak about women, but mm-hmm. I would be hard to find what a 40 year old or 39 year old woman has in common with a 21 year old man. But I, Hey, I don't know. I can't, I can't, I can't judge. I'm not knocking it. Sure, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not knocking it. I'm not knocking yeah. it. But then you also got to look at, um, was it Al Pacino or De Niro? He's wild. De Niro, Having a baby at 80. 80 and just had a baby. Right. So yeah. now it's like, cause once you get past 50, what do you, how, what's that age crap? Is it, is it the, the 30 year old? Is it the 40 or, or 25 plus seven? That'd be, you know, what's your age? What's your age? What's your age range? I must uh, take my age and divide it by half and plus seven. <laughs> so, so 27. So you're looking for a 27 year old. I'm not looking for anything. Shout out to my baby. If, if 20, <laughs> ideally, ideally, the 27 year old range is, is your sweet spot. I, maybe a 41, somebody 27 is, will be too young. 28. They at least got to be 30s, I think. I'm asking you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm saying at least, I think at least got to be 30. Maybe 28, but I do. <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? Who Maybe knows? You know what I mean? It depends. You know what I mean? But dudes who be out here like, <laughs> see, I can't even say that because I don't want the, you know what I mean, to be upset. But 21, too young, yo. Like, <laughs> 21. Uh, you do something. You know what I mean? <laughs> I do want to say this about Dre and her defense, though. Shout to Jay. Shout, shout to Jay. Um, they rock with each other though. Like I know everybody want to come up with the oh she finessing him and all that. Like take the personal outside of it. And I'm gonna say this too. Like I live I live in Texas. If she got pregnant here, the max she can get for child support is twenty one hundred a month. If she was really a predator, she would have took him to L A. and got twenty two thousand a month. The boy capped out. Like come on. Like I think everybody needs to be out of everybody's business. Just like, chill. Yeah, yeah, like what difference do it make? Like she really rock with him. Clearly, he like her. Cool. So, but but it's tough when you know you know parties and. But I, I do feel the age thing is beneficial. I feel like the forty. I, I I'm I'm a proponent of that. I'm a proponent. I feel like when you're younger, when you're younger, ages match up. You're 22. You're dating somebody that's 22 or 23. It's it's the same thing. Yeah. As you as you get older, it's yeah. like this. The, the the scale moves like this. Okay. It doesn't move like this. It doesn't move like this. It moves like. But this. but there are some younger dudes who like older women, who be cougar hunting. You know. No, what I mean? for sure, for sure. Yeah, that, that's more of a fetish, I think. Um, but I think that you, you said know, they got mommy issues. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but I just think traditionally, traditionally, men have usually been slightly older than women that's throughout history yeah. right yeah. um it's not the reversal has not happened traditionally there hasn't been a lot of older women yeah, it hasn't been a lot that have been with men that have been younger than them yeah but y'all can put it in the comments l- l- let us know what y'all think but, but, yeah, I, usually, but, but, but 21 is, is crazy that's nasty work, that's, that's damn near a teenager that's that's yeah. um for real they still got the baby bones and baby face that's nasty work that's like yeah. it's, like, it's like college it's like a college student that's wild, yo. That's nasty work. Yeah, but, I don't want to see none of y'all going to UC Berkeley and getting nothing spelled. Yeah, if, I, if you if you if you bagging something at a at a university or a college, you should. Be I'm under, gonna call you Robert. You should be under investigation. <laughs> you should be under investigation. Facts for sure. <laughs> Big for facts sure. for sure. All right. And if you're in the entertainment industry, don't text us. <laughs> Please quit being nasty. Please. <laughs> Just, just stop. Do the, do the right thing. Just stop. You do know what right, y'all be doing. Do the right thing. Do the right thing, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Um, next week we got a very hot topic. That this one, one that's, we're that gonna break the internet. 
That might last the whole episode, actually. That Absolutely. Might be, that might be a Kenny Burns whole episode situation. Um, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate y'all. Join redpanda.com. Yes. Sign up if you're interested in latest stock. If you want to get rich in the market. If you want to be rich in the market. And, and you got a master class Saturday, right? Saturday at 12 o'clock, I'll be teaching a master class at EYL University about how to network your way to become a millionaire. You know what's so crazy? I put that and somebody put in the comments like how to how to do that is be at the right place at the right time. <sighs> Selection of the right place is even <laughs> tough. Even getting in, like you can't just get in a Soho house and like even meeting Kenny. Kenny been an icon for 30 years, damn near. Yeah. Just like no, it's not that easy. I know people want on online want to make everything seem simple. It's not that easy. It's really not. Yeah. But see you guys on Monday, Market Mondays. Um, see, that's why Jay didn't do the master class <laughs> or take the dinner. Fact. That's a fact. That <laughs> Cut the haven clean off elevated. That's a fact. Listen to the album. <laughs> Listen <laughs> For to the real. Album. Go buy the album again. Cool. Scream. So I can get paid again. <laughs> Big facts. I'm going to make sure you ask me some questions. <laughs> a replay play. Oh, Ooh. man. <sighs> All right, guys. It's been love real. Nick Cannon caught a straight Nick. I love you. I appreciate Nick you. Nick Cannon caught a, caught a bad one. That was yeah. great. He did sit down with Umar, though. Umar, we, we got to talk. We got to get Umar on here. Yeah, he got to yeah. um, lower his price. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, all right. Inflation. The inflation play. Inflation play, yep. Got to get the school built one way or another. Stop it. <laughs> Shout out to all right, all like right y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Love y'all.